okay i hope i'm audible to all students who are attending this lecture of introductory econometrics we continue with our lectures on multiple regression okay we continue with our lectures on multiple regression and the book i prefer to follow for my lectures on multiple regression this is basic econometrics by damodar n gujarati so this is the book i prefer to follow for my lectures on multiple regression and if all students can recall in the previous lecture of multiple regression we had just introduced the topic we had looked at the population regression function for a three variable linear regression model so recall the population regression function for the three variable linear regression model all students can recall the population regression function was yt is equal to capital b1 plus capital b2 x2t plus capital b3 x3t plus ut okay where all students can recall that y denotes the dependent variable y denotes the dependent variable x2 and x3 denote independent variables x2 and x3 denote the independent variables u denotes the stochastic disturbance term okay u denotes the stochastic disturbance term and t stands for the tth observation okay so this was our stochastic population regression function for the three variable linear regression model which we had described in our previous lecture okay and you can clearly see i can write it like this yt is equal to expected value of yt plus ut where expected value of yt is nothing but the deterministic component it is this is the deterministic component and if you compare with the initial equation expected value of yt is nothing but b1 plus b2 x2t plus b3 x3 this is nothing but expected value of y t plus u t is nothing but the population disturbance term this is my population disturbance term okay so this was what we had done in the previous lecture then if all students can recall we had interpreted the equations b1 and b2 are called so first of all if you look at b1 b1 is called the intercept term we had done the interpretation of b1 in the previous lecture students can refer to my previous lecture for interpretations and capital b1 and capital b2 are called the partial regression they are called the partial regression or partial slope coefficients partial regression or the partial slope coefficients okay the interpretations we had done in the previous lecture for capital b1 capital b2 and capital b3 so guys this is b2 and b3 these are called the partial regression or the partial slope coefficients okay if all of you can recall b1 represents the average or the mean value of y when x2t and x3t are set equal to 0 in terms of economics the intercept term which is b1 has no interpretation but mathematically this is how we interpret the intercept term 
B1 represents the mean or the average value of Y when X2T and X3T are set equal to zero. How do we interpret B2 and B3? Quickly revising it orally with all students. B2 represents the change in the mean value of Y per unit change in X2, keeping the value of X3 constant. Okay, and if I if I talk about B3, B3 represents the change in the mean value of Y per unit change in X3, keeping the value of X2 constant. Okay, that is why these are called partial regression coefficients. Because when you are interpreting B2, you are keeping the impact of X3 constant. When you are interpreting B3, you are keeping the impact of X2T constant. Okay, so hoping students had understood this. Now, in this lecture, we look at the assumptions of the multiple linear regression model. So, assumptions of the multiple linear regression model. So let us look at these assumptions. Now we had also done the assumptions of the classical linear regression model, if all of you can recall. Now some of the assumptions in the multiple linear regression model are exactly the same, but there are some new added assumptions. So first assumption, the regression model, the regression model is linear in parameters. The regression model is linear in parameters, capital B1, capital B2, and capital B3, and is correctly specified. Okay, if you all can recall, we had done this assumption in classical linear regression model also, where we just had yi and xi. Okay, so the regression model is linear in parameters B1, B2, B3. Guys, it may or it may not be linear in the variables x2t and x3t, but it has to be linear in parameters b1, b2, and b3. Second assumption x2 and x3 are uncorrelated. x2 and x3 are uncorrelated with the disturbance term. They are uncorrelated with the disturbance term U. Okay, why? Since all of us know that X2 and X3 are non-stochastic. X2 and X3 assume fixed values. They are non-stochastic. Now, since they are non-stochastic, they are completely uncorrelated with the stochastic disturbance term U. So, I can write with the stochastic disturbance term U. Because U is stochastic. The population disturbance term U is a random variable with mean and variance. Now, since X2 and X3, these explanatory variables are non-stochastic or they are assuming fixed values. They do not have any relation, correlation with the disturbance term U. Third assumption, the error term, the error term U has zero mean value. The error term u has zero mean value. That means expected value of u i is equal to zero. We had made this assumption in classical linear regression model also that the error term is having zero mean value. Fourth assumption, homoscedasticity. Fourth assumption is the assumption of homoscedasticity. That is variance of U is a constant. We had made this assumption in our lectures on classical linear regression model also. Okay, so we can say that variance of UI is equal to sigma squared. It's a homoscedastic constant variance, okay? 
fifth assumption no auto correlation no auto correlation between the error terms ui and uj no auto correlation between the error terms ui and uj that is we can say that covariance of ui uj is equal to 0 that means two dis two disturbance terms are uncorrelated they do not follow any pattern if ui is increasing we can't say that uj is also increasing or uj is falling that means we cannot build any pattern between ui and uj they are completely uncorrelated for i not equal to j okay and now now we have something new so these five assumptions were something which we had done before also in our lectures on two variable linear regression model regression model is linear in parameters parameters are b1 b2 b3 it may or it may not be linear in the x2 and x3 but it has to be linear in b1 b2 b3 and is a correctly specified model it includes all the relevant variables okay second particular assumption x2 and x3 are uncorrelated with the stochastic disturbance term u why because x2 and x3 themselves are non stochastic that is we can say they assume fixed values since they are assuming fixed values they have no correlation with the stochastic disturbance term u the error term u has a zero uh, mean value that means we expect for every fixed value of x we expect the population disturbance term to sometimes take positive sometimes take negative values so on an average they cancel out making the expected value of ui equal to 0 fourth assumption that my population disturbance term ui has a constant variance that means for different values of x i get different values of uis now all these uis across different values of x are going to exhibit the same variance so if you all can recall for x1 u1 itself is a random variable for x2 u2 itself is a random variable for dot 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 x n u n itself is a random variable now all these uis are going to have the same variance which we denote by sigma square the fifth assumption is that there is no auto correlation between the error terms ui and uj that means they share no correlation the covariance of ui and uj is equal to 0 now let us look at what is new in multiple regression so here comes the sixth assumption no exact no exact collinearity exists between x2 and x3 no exact collinearity exists between x2 and x3 that is there is no exact linear relationship there is no exact linear relationship between the two explanatory variables there is no exact linear relationship between the two explanatory variables in this case they are x2 and x3 that means guys the sixth assumption is something new in multiple regression x2 and x3 which are my two explanatory variables themselves should not have any linear relationship okay so if i write the explanation of assumption 6 what does that mean explanation of assumption 6 so no perfect collinearity no perfect collinearity means that a variable say x2 
cannot be expressed cannot be expressed as a linear function cannot be expressed as a linear function of the other variable x3 of the other variable x3 so when i say that there is no collinearity there is no perfect collinearity it simply means that you should not be able to express x2 as a linear function of x3 or for that matter x3 as a linear function of x3 so that is something which is very important for us to understand so let's take an example what would be the problem which would arise if suppose x2 and x3 were exactly linearly related so let's take an example so suppose suppose x2t is exactly 4 times x3t that is there is an exact linear relationship there is an exact linear relationship between x2 and x3 now guys what will happen consider the population regression function what was my population regression function yt is equal to capital b1 plus b2 x2t plus b3 x3t plus ut this is my population regression function and what is my expected value of yt it is the deterministic part which is b1 plus b2 x2t b1 plus b2 x2t plus b3 x3t so this is my stochastic population regression function and this is my deterministic component this is my deterministic component now substitute the value of x2t now since x2t we have taken as 4 times x3t therefore expected value of yt will be b1 plus b2 times x2t i can write as 4 times x3t plus b3 times x3t so guys i can write expected value of yt as b1 plus 4 b2 x3t plus b3 x3t and if i further solve it what can be taken as common here x3t so it becomes 4 b2 plus b3 times x3t so i can write it like this therefore expected value of yt is nothing but b1 plus let me call 4 b2 plus b3 as a plus a times x3t where a is nothing but 4 b2 plus b3 now you can clearly see guys that if i talk about this model it's a two variable model now it's not a three variable model if i assume that x2 and x3 are exactly linearly related and if i substitute this value in my deterministic component of the population regression function i come to know that this boils down to a population regression function with only two variables now yt and x3t and now if i perform ols on this so i can write if we run ols on the above equation we get the values of b1 and a but a itself is equal to 4 b2 plus b3 so clearly you can see that there are two equations but three unknowns so or i can write it like this in a better way i can write the above in a better way like this 
the above equation i can say that the above equation the above equation is one equation it is one equation in three unknowns in two unknowns the above equation is one equation in two unknowns b1 and a okay so you can clearly see that now we cannot use ols because ols will give us b1 and a but a itself consists of two unknowns b2 and b3 so i can say ols will give us estimates of b1 and a but a itself consists of two unknowns a itself consists of two unknowns which are b2 and b3 so what do we learn we learn that if we assume that x2t and x3t are perfectly linearly related you cannot estimate the individual partial regression coefficients b2 and b3 why because the moment you are assuming that x2 and x3 are linearly related my three variable population regression function boils down to just two variables now if i perform ols on this if i do the ordinary least square method i can estimate b1 and a but a itself further consists of two unknowns b2 and b3 so we cannot find unique estimates of capital b2 and capital b3 so i can write therefore in case of perfect collinearity in case of perfect collinearity we cannot estimate we cannot estimate the individual partial regression coefficients we cannot estimate the individual partial regression coefficients which are capital b2 and capital b3 that is we cannot assess the individual effect we cannot affect the individual effect of x2 and x3 on y if i say that x2 and x3 are linearly related okay if i say that x2 and x3 are linearly related i can look at their joint impact on y but if x2 and x3 are linearly related we cannot assess their individual effects on y like i cannot look at the individual impact of x2 on y and individual impact of x3 on y why because they themselves are linearly related if x2 and x3 themselves have a linear relation i can only look at their joint impact on y i cannot look at their individual impacts on y so what we have learned from assumption 6 is that for in case of the multiple regression model our explanatory variables x2 and x3 should not be linearly related that means there should be no perfect collinearity because if x2 and x3 are exactly linearly related then performing the ordinary least squares will not be able to give us the individual estimates of b2 and b3 hence we will not be able to assess their individual impacts on x2 and of x2 and x3 on the variable y okay and then guys we have assumption 7 assumption 7 is what we have done before also for the purpose of hypothesis testing for the purpose of hypothesis testing the error term 
the error term u follows a normal distribution the error term u follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square that means guys our assumption 7 simply states that my population disturbance term ui follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance exactly equal to sigma square okay so hoping that students have understood these seven assumptions and guys this is where i intend to stop in this particular lecture the objective of this lecture was to look at all the assumptions we will be making for hypothesis testing in the case of multiple regression first assumption was that the regression model is linear in parameters second assumption x2 and x3 are not correlated with u third assumption expected value of ui is zero fourth assumption homoscedasticity variance of ui is a constant sigma square fifth assumption that there is no autocorrelation between the error terms ui and uj that means covariance of ui and uj is zero sixth assumption is that there is no exact collinearity between x2 and x3 that means there is no linear relationship between x2 and x3 and we have seen that if we assume x2 and x3 to be perfectly linearly related we cannot find individual estimates of b2 and b3 using the ordinary least squares procedure okay and the seventh assumption is that our population disturbance term ui for the purpose of hypothesis testing is assumed to follow a normal distribution with mean zero and variance equal to the homoscedastic variance sigma square. So now using these assumptions in the next lecture, we will actually perform the OLS procedure. If all students can recall, we had performed ordinary least squares for a two variable linear regression model. Now in the next lecture of multiple regression, we will perform OLS for the multiple regression, which in this case is a three variable linear regression model. So we will look at the sample regression function. We will build the residual sum of squares. Then we will optimize over it. All this we will be covering in the next lecture of multiple regression. Okay. So this is where I intend to stop. I hope all students have enjoyed this lecture. Any doubt, you can unmute your mics and ask or call up. Or you can mail me your doubts at divine school of economics at the rate gmail.com. So this is where I stop in this lecture.